So if we look at the latest uh, review by Bond of supported employment in now in several countries, but obviously mostly in the United States, individual placement and support is much better than the control voc rehab group, uh, usually twice as uh, high a level of employment. This is two different control groups, two to three times better. And you'll see that it works in Montreal, works in Hong Kong, works in Australia, and now we've seen these six other uh, European countries where it works. I wonder whether you could um, take me back to your earlier argument um, about economic cycles. And if we're looking at tables like this, how do we understand those figures against a notion of what's happening in these places economically? Because presumably what's happening in Illinois and Hong Kong and Washington at this time in terms of the labour market won't be the same. Yes. It's, 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 thank you very much. That takes me back really to my principal argument, you might say, which is this one that's hard to prove, that we work harder at rehabilitation when there are employment opportunities available and when the economy is strong. So this intervention uh, was introduced in the 90s in the United States when the economy was strong. And now there's more interest being shown in Europe where the economy has gotten a lot stronger, including Britain, in the, since the year 2000. And this uh, European study of six countries has happened here just really since things have uh, looked up a lot over here. And I, I want to say that, you know, just by way of saying it, things I think have transformed themselves in British mental health, and we can talk about this in the last 10 years. And we're seeing early intervention teams and intensive um, outreach teams, and we're seeing more efforts at uh, rehabilitation and so on. I'd like to take your uh, views on that as we go along, but um, I have a sense that there's been a really dramatic change in um, community mental health in, in Britain since the economy has picked up. Is that true or not? Not dramatic. <laughs> so, not dramatic. so these early intervention teams and these, these uh, intensive uh, support teams are not widespread and a bit of a fiction? No, they exist. Yeah. Um, but uh, their impact is unproven. Is there a change? Is there a di change from negativism to positivism between the 90s and after the year 2000? In in terms of believing that one can do more, there are there is a significant group of people who, from both within the service user movement and their allies, who would argue that whether that's had a real impact upon. Um, policy and service provision is is arguable. But it's had an it's had an impact, well, but it, whether it's as dramatic as you're perhaps arguing is debatable. We'd have to, we'd have to do the outcomes, carry the outcome studies on through the through these latest decades to be able to answer that basic question. But if you were to look back on this period from 20 years in the future, you'd have to say that the recovery movement for whatever it is, is a major factor in mental health through these last 15 years. Now, what it's accomplished is hard to say, but one thing it's accomplished is it has accomplished more positivist speech about outcome. I don't think it's had an enormous impact on mainstream psychiatry. Um, and therefore, I don't. I, I, I wouldn't accept that there is that more positivism within mainstream psychiatry. But so I'd welcome other people's views on that. Does it Alex have, might have. The question is: Does it have to be in psychiatry, or can it be in the consumer groups? Can it be in the carer groups? Can it be in the government officials? Um, what effect did the mental hygiene movement actually have on psychiatry? Maybe not that much, Alex. It's a really difficult one, uh, I think, Dick, because, I mean, I think undoubtedly there's been some improvements in community treatment, but sometimes um, it's more in terms of the re rhetoric than the reality. Sometimes it's also the reality, but sometimes it's changing names of teams, for example. In North Birmingham, which was the model for the uh, National Service Framework, they, there was a, they had teams which were called continuing care teams, 
which was a very limited ambition for the service users. They renamed them as rehabilitation and recovery teams, but they didn't change their function. So, yes, there's been some improvements. One could argue that some of these improvements have been at the cost of the acute inpatient services, which every study in the last five, six, eight years has said have been worsening. They are uh, places of chaos. They are dangerous, both to service users and to staff. And people are increasingly reluctant to go into them for very good reasons, because they are toxic environments. Um, yes, there are some early intervention teams now, which are now called, I think, in Birmingham, early detection and intervention teams. And I was actually going to ask you a question, because in your third edition, you seem to be quite, um, I, think, I think, would it be fair to say you're pessimistic about the effects of early intervention? Yeah, let me, sp let me speak to that. Let me, let me speak to the general point and then get on to that point, <coughs> because I'm going to have one last crack at this, <laughs> which is that if we were putting on a symposium on psychosocial rehabilitation at the end of the 90s, we'd be presenting almost entirely American models, a sort of community treatment, psychosocial clubhouse, supported employment. If we were going to put on a symposium now on the latest innovations in psychosocial rehabilitation, there'd be all British models or Australian. There'd be cognitive behavioral therapy for psychosis, which is, we could argue, the first demonstrably effective uh, psychotherapeutic intervention in psychosis. Uh, and now, cognitive remediation for cognitive deficits in psychosis, which is, again, is a British field. And um, although I'm a sharp critic of this field, early intervention, is, again, is a specifically not American model at all, is a European and Australian model, or essentially um, Australian and then uh, European. Although some research is being done in America systematically, system-wide, there is no system of mental health care anyway in the United States, so nobody's um, uh, pushing for early intervention, but other governments are pushing for early intervention. So all of these models, for what they're worth, are, the, are, are innovations that are happening where the economy is improving and not in America where it's getting worse. So uh, you wanted me to say something about early intervention, and maybe I'll, uh, we can take that at the end, but I, I am a sharp critic of, of, uh, of the two forms of early intervention that one can talk about, one being can you intervene before the person actually has the illness and uh, prevent it from happening, can you intervene after the illness has developed and prevent it from becoming malignant. Uh, my answer to those is no and no, but um, maybe we'll come back to that.